Hey everyone, welcome back to the other side of weight loss. Uh, I've got a great guest today. Uh, we were just talking just how much we are like soul sisters here, but what we talk about, she's right up my alley. Her name is Jeanette Bessinger. Her, she is an interfaith minister and board certified health coach, is an award-winning educator and author of multiple books featuring healthy eating. Her recipes and healthy lifestyle perspectives have been showcased in hundreds of speaking venues and media outlets, including Consumer Reports, The Washington Post, NPR, and, and NBC News. Designer of a long-running and successful hospital-based lifestyle change program and countless transformational workshops, Jeanette has helped thousands of people make lasting changes to deeply entrenched habits that no longer serve them. So welcome, Jeanette. Thanks so much, Karen. I'm delighted to be on your show. And, and as you say, we truly are <laughs> sisters. I, we're speaking to the same ladies. And we, are. we really are. Jeanette yeah. and I share a very similar uh, audience, almost yes. exactly. And so yes. we're, we're both firm believers in that kind of a holistic approach to hormone health, especially for women that are heading into perimenopause. Yes, absolutely. So, Jeanette, I know that you have a bit of your own story too. And I've, I've, I've got to read this quote because when I read this on your website, I was like, oh, that is me. And that everyone's going to say that's me when they hear it. And she says, I've struggled with everything from that embarrassing belly flap. That one made me laugh so hard. I was like, oh my gosh, I have right? such, I've got jeans on today. And I'm, thank goodness, they're up really high because I never wear jeans. And I was like, good thing my tummy flap just tucks right into these jeans and nobody can tell. <laughs> Yeah, she says, I struggled with, <laughs> what was that? It's a measure of good pants as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Like. <laughs> truly, truly. They've got to come up high enough to cover the flap. So she says, I struggled with everything from that embarrassing belly flap to mysterious autoimmune issues with weird, unpleasant symptoms to Mary, perimenopausal cravings that felt like they were on steroids. <laughs> right. Right? Like How even many though, can relate? The mysterious autoimmune condition. I always say to people, I'm very autoimmune in nature, but I don't actually have an autoimmune condition. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. That's like a lot of my client base would say exactly that thing. Yeah. Because we're, is it just that we're inflamed because of was what happened like through the hormonal shift that we're getting inflamed? Well, I actually had an interesting thought about that kind of on a metaphoric level. I realized at one point, I think I blogged about this. Actually, I, in a way, was the autoimmune disease. It was like I had sort of these natural things occurring, my feelings, my reactions, these kind of organic human things would come up and I would fight, fight, fight them. And so I was overreacting to these organic things and it was just being reflected you know on a on a disease level unfortunately for a while it's a long time in remission but i i really think that was a part of it i think we just are in this reactive like highly hyper reactive hypersensitive state in yeah. body but also in mind in feelings in spirit that's what i think and you had said that you had pretty much retired and yeah. then and that was like a couple years ago and then something shifted for you. So was that during this time? Well, the, the recognition sort of came after the fact. I, I got yeah. a little bit burned out. I, my, my brand was the clean food coach and I loved this work. Like, like, you know, I, I worked in a hospital for eight years and, and did a lot of, did some national touring and worked with hundreds of clients privately, wrote a lot of books. And I really was just getting very fatigued and it also was partly the stage in my life. My kids were, you know, heading toward empty nests and I thought, you know, I either need to take a break or maybe I'm, I'm done with this. And so I really, when my kids fully launched, I really went with that. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm just going to let go and take some time. And it just, it turned into a, a, a year of traveling. I went dark on social media, kind of all unplanned. And I thought oh, maybe it's time to retire. Maybe that's actually what's going on. But what ended up happening was this kind of, I got refueled in a way that I did not expect. It, it wasn't just R&R. &R, it wasn't, you know, seeing the country. Something fundamental shift in me, shifted in me. And it was as if I was trying, trying, searching, digging so hard for so long. And then I just stopped. 
and something came, came in. It had all been going out and all coming like from my head center. And then suddenly there was empty space. I was out in the desert. I had empty space on my calendar. And when I came home, we ended up ditching. I traveled with my husband. We got rid of, of three quarters of what we owned and we wow. super downsized. Yeah, we wow. did it. We did a huge thing. We didn't really plan it. It just kind of was very organic. And then uh, at the very end of this, I ended up having an extended alone time. I was helping uh, my mom with so, some medical issues. And I just, I had... I would really call it like a spiritual opening. I just had a big connection to something that was, that was much bigger than me, but held me, you know, but that was just enormous. And all the work and all the things that I've been trying to do, they just reorganized. They did, wow. they came together completely differently. I was like, Oh, I, I see where we're barking up the wrong tree. You know, it's not us. It's not the programs. It's not, you know, the clients, people are trying so hard. That's not really the issue. It's, I think we're really looking at the whole thing askew. So mm. all of a sudden I was, I was reinvigorated. And so I'm back and, uh, you know, rebranding and working with this new messaging and, and seeing a lot of, as I do the research now, you know, and five years ago when I, when I was very active, things are very, the world is very different, but I, I am, you know, fully in perimenopause now. And, and as I dig around, I realize there's just not much out there. There are oh, not a lot no. of maps, nope. you know, and in the medical world, especially, unfortunately, the whole, all of, you know, Western allopathic medicine is essentially based on the 160 pound man. I mean, yeah. that's yes. not completely true, but it kind of is. Mm -hmm. And fitness in a way too, the yep. researchers are men on men. And then unfortunately, the, the, the mapping of the hormonal complexity, like the way that women age hormonally, we age very rapidly. Men age hormonally at the same rate as chronologically, but we age like boom over a few years. And that, that is just unmapped. Right. And so with the new problems, with the autoimmune stuff, with the food issues that are going on, we really don't have great answers. So people like you, so your show, The Other Side of Weight Loss, and some of the guests you've had on, Annika Baker, like these, these women, we are the ones who are kind of, kind of I feel like, um, trying to throw... Uh, trying to throw some light on these yeah. issues. So it, it, it's really like shining a light and trying to forge a path. Right. That's what I feel like is this collective as a sisterhood, all our different areas of expertise that we need to be coming together and working on this because we're not getting the resources, you know, mm -hmm. in, with our doctors. We're not, we're not getting what we need in no. my opinion, my experience. Yeah. So was the aha moment that you had that was directed at your life, but was it an aha for all women that yes. were looking at this the wrong way? Yes. And re and it was really kind of a human because I, it really was a spiritual um, experience. And I yeah. hesitate even to use that language because what, what I saw was that we tend, we really divide these, we divide things up into you know, body over here for the doctor, psychology and um, over here for the psychologist and spirituality over here for the pastor or the yoga studio and nutrition over here. And actually it's very, it's very, very artificial because the issues have no boundaries <laughs> and <laughs> they don't know <laughs> that they're supposed to live in the food or that they're supposed to be mental or emotional. They don't know that. No. And, you know, pain is a beautiful example of this because most people have had some kind of experience in their lives where they were, you know, maybe you're in some pretty intense emotional pain, maybe you're grieving or, or there's something that you're working through. And then that lifts a little bit, but suddenly you're like, oh, my neck, oh, you yeah. know, or like migraine, or it, it literally jumps across these barriers because the barriers aren't real. Yeah. They're not real. And so our poor doctors run out of rope when we have to talk about the feeling center, you know, and our nutritionists run out of rope when we have to talk about the crazy that comes when we're in the, down the sugar hole or whatever it is for us eating reactive foods. And so we are kind of left stranded. We're, we're literally trying to like make this braid with yes. all of these different, you know, practitioners ourselves. And it's, it's tough. It is not, it's not easy. It's not working that well. It's really not. No. Yeah. And you're right because women, especially going through this shift in their life, 
it can, and I think it's supposed to be a very beautiful spiritual yes. transition where yes. we're supposed to age gracefully. And, you know, yes, we go through these emotional pieces, but that's really our body telling us it's time to slow down. It's time yes. to look inward. It's time to take care of ourselves, number one, instead of everybody else around us. Yes. Right? Huge. We're not getting that. We're not being told that. Instead, we're being told, don't freaking age. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you do, yes. do Stay not age. Stay on top of it with your injections and Botox and yes. everything else. As a, right. <laughs> As if there's no permission for that. No. And that kind of controlling, like keeping everything in a box, like the, the mothering years, like whether or not you have children, it doesn't matter. But those years are a time of knitting, producing, connecting, holding, smoothing the waters and, yes. and we're biochemically where we're rewarded for that this is not that time anymore this is like the fire burns that up you know like that's the way I think about it with flashing and things like that like that's not our role in this phase no. and if we keep trying to hold on with clenched fists like to control each piece and to fix everything we get exhausted and it's problematic because it's it's yeah. like our, our bodies are going nope in our feelings. Like you just don't get to do that anymore. No. And it's like your body doesn't give you that option. And the more you try to resist, it seems to me that the worse the symptoms get, the worse the food cravings get, the worse yes. the weight comes on, the worse the anxiety gets because you're trying so hard to push it away and you're not exactly. connecting it all together. That, exactly. Hey, this is a shift in hormone. Like you said, I like when you said we're, bi we biochemically get a payoff when, for those emotions in our fertile years. Like, can you explain that? Is well, that hormonally? It, it is. It's hormonally. And they're literally the, the path, you know, you just get sort of these, the, these short surges of, you know, FSH and LH during the, and they sort of, you know, trigger this like clarity and this creative thing. And then the rest of the time we are, um, and I can't remember exactly the, it, it's, it's definitely like the, the feel good hormones. It might even be, a, there's a serotonin connection, but our, when we reach out and hold and care for other people, we feel good. That makes us feel good. And then that as the as the the first progesterone starts to drop you know that kind of solid grounding hormone and then later estrogen eventually testosterone as those come down and the FS, fsh and lh are creeping up you really reach a tipping point where it's kind of like you're shaking like you wake up and and you're like you know wait a minute there's like three other people living in my house and why the heck do I do all the work? You know, it's like, it's really, and we get this so terrible true. rep, you know, of being, but, but that's actually what it is. It's like these kind of these scales fall away and we're like, hold on, you know, and I really think that's adaptive. I really do. The kids need to take their own, you know, they, they need to take a responsibility for their own lives yeah. and, you know, and, and the partnership between the, the, you know, two people who are raising children, if that's happening, the, there's a kind of independence that needs to happen because it's a, the, the constellation changes, yeah. you know, if you did have kids and then the kids leave, it's different and you have to find your feet in a new way. And, yeah. and for me, this is very like, it's very archetypal. It's like moving from that kind of mothering into queen, you know, it's like sharing our information and sharing our power and, and our gifts and, and just kind of shining our light. And, yeah. and it's really tough to do that if you're, if you're just cranky and sick and worried about your menopause. You know, I remember reading um, in uh, Sarah Gottfried's book about how when women are going through perimenopause, what's happening to them hormonally makes them really want to be alone. And she's just, and her talking about how women are now having kids at such an older age. Oh, and I was so like, oh, that's so true. Like I had my son at 37 and he's just gone wow. into kindergarten and I'm going just starting perimenopause. And I feel that, you know, and it's yeah. like how many women are going through that where they wait till they're 40 and then they have to go through these toddler years and these with their youth when they it's just true. want to be alone yes that, that's so that's totally mm -hmm. fascinating to me yes me and too. The, then the way that we are the way that we are um kind of our, I, I call it a cortisol contraction like we're we're in this we everything that happens during these years gets cranked because our, our cortisol is so high. And but part of that is that women in trying to just match men 
the tasks mm -hmm. of men that us going to work that us you know being kind of equal earners that although we still do you know splitting the tasks at home but actually it, it ends happening. up being yeah it yeah. ends up being <laughs> more of that but all those kinds of things for women and this is true regardless of your hormonal age the we, we carry a higher mental load whenever we kind of do anything of any level of stress. So if a man and a woman are doing parallel activities, so he's going to work, she's going to work, or you're having a fight or you're planning a vacation, we will carry a higher kind of cortisol injection and we'll carry that for longer than the men. So I, I, I'm just like, my mind's going as you're yeah. talking. Like, so we're trying to sort of do these things, like keep up with the men, but it's actually harder for us. And we're trying to have these babies later, yes. but actually our bodies are saying, no, you need to be by yourself. And so yeah. we're kind of, we're swimming upstream. We we're are. Swimming upstream. I always say we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit as women, because we had to fight for our rights and we had to fight for equality. But in that, in this time now we've, we've kind of taken, we've also taken, we're still taking on so much of the household stuff. Yeah. And we've got, like you said, we're more emotional. And I think you saying that to, to my listeners will help them to understand why it's so different between man and woman. Because I constantly look at my husband and think, how does he handle things so well? And, you know, like, and, and how much he works. And, and yes. just, it's all, they are such a different species. They they're really so different. Their yeah. brain function is totally different. We're different at a cellular level. All of our systems are different. Literally, like our digestion is different. Like it's, 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 this is again you know kind of what i'm seeing as i look into western research we kind of pretended you know they when they do the tests, if women are in any hormonal stage, they're typically ruled out, like they're not even tested, like for the meds or certain things, right. because it's complex, because we have this mistaken idea that everybody's kind of this cookie cutter thing, and it's just not true. We are so different. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm with you in that, in terms of the, we have to, we had to do the breakthrough. We had to crack the molds. We had to come out of the kind of old ways of thinking and find our equal footing. There's no question whatsoever about that. And so now we have to, it's a kind of a redefinition. Like we're mm -hmm. still bashing through those barriers, but we need to redefine for ourselves a world and a way of operating that matches who we are, yeah. you know, biologically, biochemically, spiritually, like that we, that's what we have to be working for, not to be men and inhabit a man's world, no. but to actually craft a more woman friendly world with, you know, with the men side by side. That's yeah. what I think. I mean, yeah, not a big task at all, but yeah. <laughs> Piece of cake. So no problem, ladies. Yeah, right. so no problem at all. <laughs> so we just have to, you know, have our cake and eat it too, but yep. that's okay. But yes, it's, it's a challenge. And I, this is stuff that I think about all the time because mm -hmm. we're seeing hormone dysfunction on these epidemic levels right now. And women are suffering yes. so badly compared so to painful. men. Yep. Like we are just, it's absolutely, infertility is on the rise. All yes. of these problems, all the gynecological Alzheimer's. problems. Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is on yes. the rise. Yes. And there's a really strong link between Alzheimer's and actually hormones. Like your brain and your ovaries are connected. And if you, if you're, you know, if you have to have a hysterectomy, that increases your risk for getting Alzheimer's. Oh, like wow. I did not yeah. know that. I didn't know that. No. Right. And so this is, and that's apparently it's been out there for 10 years, but it's not talked about a lot. And so the, you know, why? what's why do women get Alzheimer's twice as often as men and the, and it's really to do with this kind of fast with this accelerated hormonal aging thing that we do which is totally organic it's totally organic but there's something going on there that that needs to be supported and kind of um, retooled based on what we're doing through that we have to change what we're doing through that passageway with you know mm -hmm. with our food and our habits and we have to because yeah. the risks are climbing 
Yeah. You talk a lot about the cortisol contraction. You mentioned it earlier. What does that mean? Like, do you feel like that's one of the driving factors behind why women are going through perimenopause so intensely? I I do. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not a medical researcher. This is really coming from um, my working with thousands of people, hundreds of women, you know, for about 20 years, just sort of seeing similar things and then seeing, watching the trends, like watching things change, which is is interesting what happens. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I started to see that it wasn't just, you know, obviously we all know about stress, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I, I kind of don't even like talking about it on some level because it increases our stress. (laughs) We talk about how stressed we are and how important it is to stop getting stressed. We kind of, it makes it worse. So I haven't really figured this out. But what I'm noticing is that the levels of stress are kind of becoming sort of 360. It's like our, our, you know, we talked about the parenting or the, this very intense, which is a whole other conversation, but like helicopter parenting, snowshoe parenting actually takes an enormous amount of work and effort and, you know, lifts your stress level. And the mental load piece for women that we're, we're doing equal things, but we're actually working harder in terms of our adrenals and our cortisol to do the same thing. So that's up there. And then as you well know, and have mapped the, the, um, food reactions Mm -hmm. actually are a cortisol producer. If you're continually Mm -hmm. eating foods that are, you know, low grade triggering that autoimmune system, there's a lot of adrenaline kind of cruising through your system. And uh, of course, a super high input stimulation, like just never being able to be alone, like constantly on the other end of, of a phone, like a chat request or a work request, or I was interviewing a, a new um, person, a, a new VA person the other day. And she was like, so please don't, you know, you can, if you need to, you know, text me at two in the morning and please don't. And I was like, what? And she's like, oh, I know, I know. Everyone says they won't, and then they do. And I, I think I'm, I'm old. Like I'm 54. Like I would at 2 a.m. text no. anybody at 2 a.m. No. But this is, this is, you know, she's like in her mid 30s, and this is her norm: is that she yeah. can get text, texted by her clients all night long, and she feels like she has to respond. And so when you can't even have inter, you know, uninterrupted sleep, like I'm sorry. When how's the body supposed to cope with that? It copes, you know, it's trying and trying and trying to just kind of, you know, shoot this stress out. And then that when we hit those perimenopausal years, which can be kind of anytime, it's, it's earlier and earlier in some ways for some of us, yes. when that starts to happen, progesterone st- starts to drop. That's usually one of the first changes. Progesterone is the precursor to cortisol. Like in order to make cortisol, you need to draw from progesterone. So it's taking what would be a more gradual drop and it's kind of bottoming it out. So we're like, you know, this all of a sudden there's no progesterone. And so I really think that we're seeing a lot of estrogen dominance, not necessarily, I mean, yes, we we do have phytoestrogens and xenoestrogens coming in through the diet and endocrine disruptors and lots of things. But actually, I think you could have even a a normal amount, but your progesterone is so low that the teeter totter effect is giving you this, this, you know, sense of, of the the situation of estrogen dominance. And that's a really tricky thing, like medically to sort of pin that down or understand that. And again, I'm not a scientist. This is just a a theorizing and looking at other people who are are mapping it. I really think that this is, this is a big piece of what's going on for us. I really do. I agree. Yeah, I'm the same. Like uh, working with so many women, that's exactly what I see as well, like to the T. (laughs) And you're right. Like you said, when you say, oh, I don't want to talk about cortisol because, you know, and I'm the same way where I think, oh my gosh, people are, it's, it's like they don't want to hear about it because they don't feel like there's anything they can do. This is life. So it's like they just, when they start to hear about it, they just kind of turn, they turn off. Right. And it's just in one ear and out the other. Well, and that, I think it's adaptive in a way, honestly, because it's like, I can't handle one more thing. You're telling me that my situation of not being able to handle things is making me sick. And so I, of course I can't hear that. Mm -hmm. And this is why in, in the approach that I take now in my, my program's called the, the me boot, the me reboot, it is the whole orientation behind it is to kind of approach this issue, not as a problem, but with this really gentle 
loving, soft touch approach. Like we have to start treating ourselves as if we really, really liked ourselves, <laughs> 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 so ridiculous. But we do, we treat ourselves like these, you know, I don't know, workhorses yes. or these, you yeah. know, our bodies are failing us. I hear, you know, my body's failing me. I'm like, oh, and I can't handle this stress. I don't want any more stress. It's like, well, then we can't stress about stress. We mm -hmm. at some point we have to soften. We have yeah. to come back home. We have to take the, the energy from this sort of, you know, kind of mind center down, drop it down into the heart and the belly centers. We just have to. Yeah. We can't do it on our own. We, we need some kind of support in a, in a bigger way. We have to be softer. Yeah. I, I like that. We have to be softer. And I yeah. think that's important to hear. It's not, you know, people say, oh, meditate. And I tell my clients this all the time, meditate, go to yoga, journal, like do things for yourself, but just simply being a little bit softer on yourself because we are, we all try to be super woman, like at all the time, because we feel like we have to, we got to do it all. We got to work, we got to cook, we got to clean, we got to take care of the kids. We got to, we're, we're Wonder Woman. Yeah, and, and we time. feel like we have we feel like we have to do that and and there's really and and we do i mean on some level most of us have multiple hats to wear and and our time is very pressed and maybe you know aging parents and kids and in between but there's a real there's a very crucial difference between being super active and busy from a kind of desperate stress push, like from a push from the back and relaxing into great effort. There is a huge difference between you may actually do the same thing. You might have to do the same number of tasks in a day, but if you can do it from a place where, you know, your jaw isn't like locked down and you're not in a million other places other than what, you know, if you can bring yourself into what you're actually doing, you can move quickly, you can be efficient, you can, but it's, it's operating from this belly center instead of this sort of frantic mm -hmm. stress mm -hmm. center. There's, there's, it's just a different way of operating. And so I'm with you like meditation and yoga. These are the training grounds. They're the training grounds to learn how to do this. Yeah. So they have a terrific effect, you know, obviously they're going to, you know, they increase your dopamine and they bring the cortisol down and there's no question during the class or during your practice time, but actually, and I think this is missed a little bit. I think, that, I think people don't all completely understand this. The point of those practices is to learn how to um, observe your natural edges without doing a lot of interfering. Mm -hmm. You know, so long yoga hold is you're, you're watching that pain without trying to mitigate it or do anything like how close can, how can I be with it? How can I, and this is, and same with, you know, meditation, like you're allowing the thoughts to come, but you're not traveling with them. You don't jump on that train of thought, mm -hmm. you know, you yeah. just kind of watch it go by. And this practice gives you a little bit of space between all the thoughts and the action, the busy mind, what's going on out there, what's going on in here. It gives you a little bit of space between that and this kind of witness part of ourselves, which is so inherently just still mm -hmm. and, and peaceful. It's, you know, I, I've heard spiritual teachers talk about that part of us as kind of the sun and so sometimes it's obscured, like you don't know the sun's there on a cloudy day and there's a crazy storms going on, but it's always there. Right. That's very real. Mm -hmm. And so those practices to be able to just, even if you can just touch it, like just glimpse it, just, they go way beyond, you know, your 10 minutes of rushed, you know, yeah. um, yoga nidra at the end, yeah. <laughs> you know, dead man's pose, yes. like, thank yeah, yeah, God. Yeah. Shavasana. Like, oh, right. That's my favorite part. Shavasana. Right. Oh, yes. I go to yoga so I can lie down and do Shavasana. Yes, <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, and I like that. I like that what you're saying, just every, how you have to bring it into every day. And it made me think of my drive to work this morning and mm -hmm. I was in a rush. I had to leave my son at school. He was crying because I was, he just started kindergarten. Oh. I had help pancake breakfast that morning at the school. So I'm like 
get in my car, you know, I'm driving down as fast as I, and then I'm like, whoa, I've got tw- uh, half an hour to drive to work, chill out. And that's all I did. I didn't turn the radio on. I didn't. And I'm, I've been trying so hard lately to take those moments where I want to fill it up. Like it's so automatic for everybody to, well, I have 10 minutes. I'm going to jump on my phone. I'm going to listen to a podcast. Don't stop listening to my podcast, but crank up the radio, whatever it is. Like you're always filling your brain with noise when you should just, if you could take those moments or like you said, even in the busy times, shift it Mm -hmm. and just try to be more calm in that moment. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. I think it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk a lot about emotional management. Is that, you know, is that, is there more to it than what we were just talking about then? Yeah. I mean, on plate and off plate. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I do, you know, one of the other sides of weight loss for me is kind of everything off the plate. Like, of course we have to address the food, you know, this is, it's really important. And the, the, because I'm now kind of seeing the, the body and the mind and the, the belief, core beliefs, the tissues, I'm seeing these things as kind of one unit now. I don't really see the divisions in the way that I used to. And so kind of eating becomes this sort of conversation between your tissues and your hormones and your core beliefs and your history and even like your like your destiny like this it's sort of like this and so working with the feelings it's not really for me um emotional management because that that sort of framework is in the same way stress management it 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 puts us on the wrong side of it it puts us in like trying to lasso and control this thing, which really just isn't that effective. And especially as we're hitting those perimenopausal years, there's like a call for something different. Is, and yeah. it's, it's very hard to, it's really hard to articulate what this is because it's in, what I've seen is that it's experiential. Mm-hmm. Like when you have the experience of it, it's this like, <gasps> aha, like, oh, oh, oh. And so until you have that, it's, it's a tough thing to talk about, but it really, if, if we think of the, this, so let's, let's choose like, you know, uh, you're, you're walking away from your sobbing son and I, my heart bleeds, you know, kindergarten and that, you know, oh, it's tough. And so, and so you have this, you have this reaction inside. This is something. There's like a, a biochemical reaction. There's a stirring. There's, you know, Candace Pert thought called, wrote a great book called Molecules of Emotion that like something's actually produced inside in the system. And this is this is organic. This is of nature. This is of the Tao. Like this is very, very human. It's like the weather, like the weather on the planet, the weather in our body. It happens. And what we tend to do, most of us is we either kind of stuff it down, like crank it down there, and it tends to go into the tissues, and we might use eating or other techniques, or like you said, filling the time, you know, listening to a podcast list, like like pushing it down, or um, in another mood, or if we have a, you know, slightly different personality type, we shoot it out, like we vent it out, and this is kind of road rage, like Mm. irrational reactions and things. It's, It's like this, literally, there's just this organic energy and we're constantly, we don't like it. So we're like, get down there or, you know, get out. And so there is a third option. <laughs> There's actually something else that can happen with this. And that is to feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> so, <laughs> we can feel it. So, <laughs> and of course, it's not pleasant. You know, we have all these stories and ideas about, you know, what it means. Like, I don't, that's a terrible feeling, this grief or this. But actually, the truth is when you break it down and you actually tune in to your body, your physical body, it's usually like like sparkles and heat and tension. There might be a little nausea, like the actual sensations. They're just not that bad. They're really not. It's this whole story that we have going on around what it means and what's going to happen next. And I can't handle it. And so what I've been coaching, um, what I've been coaching my clients to, to sort of learn how to do is to rather than plunging right in, because it is, we don't like it. It's generally we, the feelings that we're, you know, getting rid of are ones that we don't like. So if you can actually notice, like catch it, like, oh, okay, I'm having a feeling before you stuff it. And even if you can quickly locate it, like, where is it in my body? Like, okay, it's rolling right around my heart center. It's like moving, rolling. And then 
with your awareness in your mind's eye, you actually just lean back, like just a hair, like just a little like lean away from it. And so I call this different things, you know, the child captain, if you read my website, like yep. the little girl inside, but also it's just, it's just charge. It's just like energy. And so instead of trying to do anything with it, we let it do its thing because it knows what to do. It, it really does. When you don't interfere with it, it knows how to go into the tissues and it actually kind of energizes you, even difficult emotions. And all you have to do is imagine, you can make a lot of space around this. You can be like, okay, this thing is happening in my chest. I'm going to imagine like a football stadium of space. I'm going to give it that space and then just kind of let it do its thing. And what happens is it will organically start to digest. It, your body will do the same way you chew a bite of food, you swallow, you're done. Your body goes to work. It's the same way with feelings. You, you notice that feeling, you accept it because it's there. Don't stuff it. And then just kind of just tip away and just make some space for it and, and let it mm -hmm. be there. And it's very, this is very subtle, but when you actually have the first direct experience of it, it's, it's kind of life changing. It's kind of like, oh, this thing, this crazy thing can be going on and I don't have to get involved. Right. It's literally just sensation and it's going to pass. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I wish you, I wish you would have told me this when I was about 12. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Right? Me too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. If we had, and this is actually the time, this is now the time for us to mother ourselves mm -hmm. in the way that we didn't receive. And mm -hmm. it's no fault to our mothers because they are trained by their mothers and nobody's ever really known how to do this in any kind of, you know, real way. And so we actually have the opportunity to be present and allow that part of ourselves to we are the ones that show up we it's not it doesn't have to be you know you don't need someone on the outside i almost said you, it doesn't have to be a therapist but of course we do need we do need certain kinds of counseling yeah. to hold space for us at certain times and to bridge us but this action everyone is capable of presencing their own organic sensations everyone is capable of this, even if it's just to a very small degree. And it, and it comes from this kindness. It's like, I, I have this kind of, it's really kind of compassion and action. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, there's this energy. And what if I just kind of let it be there? Mm -hmm. Um, one more. Can I share one more thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. I love to this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm like, so, as you're talking, I'm doing all these motions. Of, you know, yeah. Good. <laughs> doing what you're talking about. So no, yes, it's great. Please. It's great. So there's another sort of trick, which is really helpful because this is so subtle. It really is subtle. And that's why, again, like meditation helps you get it. It helps you separate like, oh, there's a feeling instead of immediately becoming the feeling. Mm -hmm. So another way to do that is when you catch yourself and you can just like, it doesn't even have to be a, a strong feeling, just at different points in the day, notice how you're holding yourself. Like notice how you're sitting, notice, you know, what's going on. And I tend to have people focus on um, the jaw and the belly because typically we're gripping in both places, sometimes shoulders and neck too. We kind of do this like bracing thing. And so when you notice what you're doing, because you are doing something, it's a hundred percent unconscious, but you are holding, there's a bracing that's happening. And when you catch that, you, you want to take it over a little bit. So instead of trying to like fight it, so I'll, so if I tune in right now, like I can feel my belly kind of pushing out a little bit. So I'll just take that That's feeling. That's just your flap. So it's my flap. It wants to come out. It's <laughs> always trying too. to be free, yeah. trying yeah. to be free. And so, and so I'll take, I'll take that and I'll actually like take it over and I'm going to exaggerate it just a just a hair, like gently, like, okay, you want to push out? Okay. And then after it, and there's like a moment, it's like, okay, it feels all right. And then I'm just going to kind of let that go. And what happens is it unspools it because we're doing these constant unconscious movements and actions, like all the time we're doing them. And so if you use your conscious mind to notice them and take them over and just make them a little bigger, it's like you step into it. And then when you let go, it allows the body to be like, oh, oh. Like, I don't have to fight this moment. I don't have to fight this thing in the same 
way. And that's, mm -hmm. that's maybe a little more concrete way of doing the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, I used to do body work. I did body work for 16 years mm -hmm. and people just, people don't realize that their emotions, if they're not dealt with are stored in the tissue of the body. Like you were saying earlier, oh, and this yes. is, this is for real oh, all the yes. ladies that are listening. This is not woo woo. This is it science. Is not woo woo. It is a hundred percent real. And I will say I've worked on thousands of people and you, I can't tell you how many times I saw tears and anger and just from working on somebody's body and getting into the deep tissue work. And it's one of the reasons people will cry at yoga and, and even breathing techniques where yes. you breathe into areas of your body that you've shut down yes. emotionally and the tears just, you just, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had that happen to me where doing, Same. getting body work and just starting to bawl my eyes out because I'm breathing into Same. like my heart chakra or my yes. pelvis or something like that. And that is beautiful. That is a really deep release of something that you've been holding onto. And the body in some ways, like extra weight allows you to handle more charge, like, like a big body can handle oh. kind of more, you know, and so we kind of get bigger to handle this, but it's stored in there. <laughs> like it's actually in yeah. there. Yeah. And so I just, I wrote a blog. It's actually, it's, I think it's funny, but I, I wrote a blog about this exact thing around working out, like hard working out. Yeah. And it's called like, you know, why I work out at home or like crying after you work out, why I work out at home <laughs> because, um, cause I will ball a lot, like an embarrassing amount with it, an aggressive, wow. especially um, strength training. Yeah. like weightlifting and things like that. I'll have this big, like, <laughs> like oh, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, but that's why, cause I have yes. so much, you know, and Trapped this is, uh, you know, if you have, if you have early trauma and this is on, this is on my site too, like sort of making, you know, touching on this a little, this is, I think trauma is one of the areas that as we start to understand more this this connection between all the different arenas trauma is one of the areas that's going to kind of pave the way it kind of already is that we are now understanding really just in the last couple of years that that tra trauma that happens in early childhood affects physically affects the brain and affects your development and kind of can put you at risk for certain kinds of diseases and certain you know wow. there's an absolute correlation between how things that happen to us on an emotional level and how we kind of manifest or operate physically. Right. So yes, they're stored in there. They're also formative. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I don't, again, I don't say that to be like, like, well, it's hopeless. You know, if this happened to me and I can't change it because it's in the past, that's not actually true. Mm -hmm. It, it sets a certain trajectory, but learning these techniques of how to allow ourselves really to be as we are, this is actually kind of my whole spiritual practice at this mm -hmm. stage. You know, I'm a long, long, long decades long meditator. And now pretty much what I do, my practice is allowing things to be as they are. Right. And it's sort of the more it's wow, revolutionary. I, that's great. <laughs> it took I me love 40 it. years to figure this out. <laughs> but, but, um, so that, but, but actually the action of that, of letting, letting this kind of, uh, this stuff be in the tissue, letting the emotional thing happen, allowing ourselves, acknowledging that we've had this trauma, that is all part of this gentling, mm -hmm. this releasing of control, this, this allowing life to start to move through us, even when there are hitches and blocks and this and that. And so, yeah. you know, release work, is I think you, it's pivotal mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. as much as we can to kind of empty that tank, yeah. but our daily life can be release work in that we don't have to hold on to anything new. Right. It can actually move through. We don't have to grab every terrible feeling and every stress and, and pack it which into that trash can, yeah. which is yeah. what we do. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to. No. Yeah. And I think those couple exercises are so simple enough for everybody to try. And for those that are listening that are going, oh, this is, I can't imagine being able to be that aware of my emotions. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most people aren't. No, no. And it, it, and it first, takes awareness. It does. And it's, and the first stage is actually even just asking yourself from time to time, how do I, how am I feeling right now? Mm -hmm. Like literally checking in. That is a loving act. 
to literally, and if it's, if it's still too much, you know, if it's too kind of triggery and uncomfortable to go into the emotions, go to your body. How's yeah. my body feeling right now? Cause the emotions, that's where we get them, you know, is yeah. in the body. Like, Oh, you can, t- you can sense heat and tension and squirrely, you know, activity and, you know, just pr- do the whole thing. You can do this practice with an itch on your nose. You can literally allow that itch to be there without, you know, doing something about it, scratching it, making it go away. Just do the practice with something totally non-triggering and that will begin to open the space. Right. Ooh, I like that a lot. And I think even just asking your body what it wants right now, I've Mm. definitely been practicing that over the last couple of years instead of fighting. Like we are very cyclical women. Even if you're not actually cycling in a month, you're still you have hormonal shifts throughout the month and throughout the seasons and the years. And so really just paying attention to that and know that you're not, you're not, Oh, you don't always feel the same mm-hmm. and honor that. Mm-hmm. And it's cause we really tend to push it away. Like when we're PMSing or you're having a bad day, maybe with your perimenopausal stuff and you've got a lot of anxiety and you're supposed to be going to the gym and going to meet your friends for lunch or going to that party and you go because you feel like you have to when really you need to just turn inward and be like, what do I actually want to do right now? Yeah. What would be ideal if I could do it and I didn't have to offend anybody? What would it be? Yeah. And then try to honor it. Cause it might just be like for a lot of the time I'm like, well, I just feel like lying in bed and reading a good book today or whatever. And then I'll try and get to it as best I can. Or I just won't, I'll, I'll turn down those people I had to go for lunch with or whatever it is. But try to honor where you're at in that moment in your body, I think is key. It's huge. Huge. That that is the practice in a way is learning. And it's back to that, you know, the tall order that we had a little while ago. (laughs) My alarm started going off on my phone. (laughs) Talk about, come on, Karen, de-stress here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that that's, and also what I wanted to say too, If it's tough for you to do this on your own, I definitely recommend looking out, you know, looking for somebody that does maybe some energy work or um, a good massage, even acupuncture, like all of these things can certainly help you get in tune with your body, yoga, meditation, all these practices can help. So if you need some help externally, then get it just so you can start being in touch with it because as you go through perimenopause, your body's asking you to do this, screaming at you to do this. Yeah. That, I mean, that's beautiful. And that's, we will learn from each other and there mm-hmm. is so much great help out there in, there really you know, is. in all the techniques and, and honoring, honoring our own phases and our own needs is the beginning of this, this revolution that we're talking about, yeah. you know, that, that women cannot be on all the time. We are, we are lunar ladies. As you say, we are seasonal ladies. We are, you know, in flow with our environments in a very profound animal way. And so allowing that to be so actually gives you more energy and more relief and more health Mm -hmm. than sort of trying, 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 fighting, fighting, fighting. Like it, it, it just does. So I definitely second that. Amazing. Okay. Now, before we run out of time, tell us where everybody can find you and what you have to offer. Cause I know you've got an incredible program. Oh yeah. Thanks so much. Um, my, uh, my program is completely self-guided. It's online at the moment. I do teach live versions from time to time in different places, but it's called the me boot, the me reboot. And it's on my website, JeanetteBessinger.com. And, um, I will have, uh, this podcast located at JeanetteBessinger.com forward slash other side. And so that's a nice link. And actually that, that particular link has a little free giveaway in there, awesome. which is, I, I call it the, the over 40 equalizer. It's like a little mm, kind of nice. jumpstart program for the, the bigger one. Um, and that's free. And there's a little bit of information where it, there's some on the plate kind of suggestions and off the plate suggestions, just to give you a little taste of it. But, um, uh, yeah, so that, that program's available, um, all the time and I'm always happy to answer questions and Mm -hmm. you can find me on Facebook at the clean food coach Nice, and uh, love to answer questions. Great. So, yeah. Yay. Yay. Well, I think I'm going to have to have you back on because oh, I, I love, love this conversation. And like I said, we're just eye to eye and people need to hear this. These women it's need true. to hear this. So I it's really true. appreciate talking to you today. Thank you for coming on the show. 
Thanks so much, Karen. Take care.